like they would yell and scream and complain about their clients doing the exact same things they turn around and do. The only thing that makes any sense to me about that, and I could be wrong, there might be some other things, is that they're not emotionally detached and so they're acting like they're idiot clients. <laughs> And we are doing today the Emotional Gymnastics for Real Estate series, which still is a name that may not mean anything to anybody other than me and Jim. It makes us smile. Now, good, good. It made Brian Curtis smile too. So we have a guest host with us today, which is the uh, the one and only Brian Curtis. Uh, who Thanks is, for having me. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Uh, he's a fantastic coach, trainer, um, man of mystery. And I will say nothing. Man of mystery. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, as Jim and I were talking about in the green room, um, I haven't left Colorado in like two and a half years, so I'm not sure that I'm a man of definitely not the international man of mystery anymore for sure. So <laughs> you just you just you take it all in one of those mountains just in case. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. And we've got Jim Godwin here, who is uh, runs a fantastic real estate team in Kansas City. Jim, uh, and what connects Jim and Brian is they are both incredibly. Uh, they're going to deny this, but emotionally intelligent human beings. They are. They really are. And, and so today, and I'm, I'm Jesse Zagorski. I, I'm a broker, run a team in San Diego, and uh, I'm just fascinated by psychology and emotions. And what we're talking about is how do you remain detached during real estate transactions? Is that a benefit to be detached? Is there a benefit to be attached ever? This conversation was sparked because Brian made a comment on another webinar we were on. I'm like, that would be a great webinar, dude. And, and here we are. Here we are. <laughs> so I think I want to have you start off, Brian. I'm going to ask you a question. We can kind of roll from there. But sure. um, what made you say, you know, I think you said something along the lines of being detached in a real estate transaction is one of your superpowers or just being attached from the experience. Why, why do you think that's important in real estate? So as many of you may or may not know, I don't know, but there's the things they consider the five most stressful things to do. And it's like marriage, divorce, having a kid and buying and selling it. There might be another one, but on the list of five, I can always, I can remember four, I can always remember the fifth one. It doesn't really matter. Buying and selling a house is one of those things. And so I actually, I'm going to go as far as to say it's your fiduciary duty to say emotionally attached in a real estate kind, kind of thing, because who's, who's attached? the buyer, the seller, and more than likely the other agent. So somebody has to be the person who is going to, to not get angry, not get frustrated, not get irritated. And I argue that as agents, that is our responsibility because at the end of the day, and we've all seen this, how many times have you seen an agent sell their own house or buy their own house and, and they're a train wreck? Like they would yell and scream and complain about their clients doing the exact same things they turn around and do. The only thing that makes any sense to me about that, and I could be wrong, there might be some other things, is that they're not emotionally detached. And so they're acting like they're idiot clients. So that's kind of that's kind of where I come from. There's, there's a synopsis of why I think it's important, but there's more to it, of course. So, but I, I hope that answers that question. I, I, I think we're done with the webinar. I think that, that was it. That was <laughs> Thanks for coming. Appreciate you guys. It was great here today and uh, send checks to, okay, just kidding. I, I, can't, I can't disagree with that. I mean, Jim, do you, you, you agree with that, that it falls under fiduciary duty in a way? I, I love that you said that, Brian, because as soon as you said that, I thought, Man, that is that is so spot on because, um, because we do have a fiduciary duty to do the best that we can for our clients at all, all every moment in the transaction. And when we are acting from emotion, mistakes get made. Yeah, because you're because you're you're um, you're reacting to things that are happening instead of being proactive. And when you're in a reactive state of mind. You, you then tend to act from a point of um, anger or frustration, and then you do and say things that you normally wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. And that goes against what's best for your client. Sometimes easier said than done. Totally. Amen. I get <laughs> Amen. that. And, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to make this whole webinar was to dive into that and give some, I mean, there's plenty of books out there on how to stay calm and control your feelings. So I'm not, we're not trying to rehash that, but there are some techniques that I know you guys use and some things you've done in your life to structure in a way so that we can remain detached specifically in a real estate scenario, mm -hmm. right? You guys have both sold lots of houses. You've been in transactions going sideways. 
let's go that way for a few minutes and cover, have you ever been in a situation where you felt yourself not be, you know, getting it, being too attached and what did you do about it in that moment? You guys think about any examples? Yeah, can I start? Yeah. Go ahead, please. Um, I think the, the it's, um, especially for people that are starting this for the first time and wanting to tr like um, train in, in doing this is um, not being afraid to say, I don't know. Mm. Um, when, when I'm starting to get into that reactive um, state of being, um, my, my go-to is to say, I'm not sure, let me go figure it out, I'll call you back. And then I, I take a breath, I, I disengage from the situation, I go for a walk, I talk to other people, I get some other point of views, other perspectives, and then I come back um, refreshed from a new perspective, and then I'm able to actually have a conversation. I love that. You're muted, Jesse. Jesse, you muted yourself. <laughs> I'm on mute. I was saying the uh, someone on Facebook made a comment. They said, "Be the voice of common reason, clearer heads." The only reason, to, the only way to have a clearer head, like you said, I love that response, Jim. To say, "I don't know," and take a breath. And by the way, Junky, you did make it. I saw you got the link. Thank you. So Junky Patel is here, runs an amazing team, Northern California. You're on mute as well, Junky. But if you want to, we're starting from the framework to start with that being detached is helpful. Then we can go back to the end and see if there's ever times where we believe we should be attached. But let's start with the framework where being detached is a positive. Because I think Brian, Jim, and I agree uh, on that. And Jim just threw out the first technique as to you know take a breath. I don't know if you can see this on camera. See what my AirPods case says? Yeah. It says breathe. It say? It says, <laughs> every go. time I pull up my AirPods, which I do, I don't know, 16 to 20 times a day, I have this little reminder and I have just go. Uh -huh. And even when Jim was started saying, I say, I don't know, I found myself taking a breath, just listening to him talking. There is something really powerful in that moment. Do, do you, Junkie or Brian, do either you guys do anything like that? Like that response of, I don't know, or breathe? So, uh, Brian, let me, sorry, I'm going to no, go No, you go first, by all means. <laughs> I am so sorry. It's been so long since I've been with you guys. I apologize. It's been crazy. First off, I want to acknowledge that part. And then second, um, I just want to say thank you again. I'm always here, but I'm not with everything going on. This is a great one because I feel that I'm so emotional when it comes to clients. I am the first to be so emotional, but my coach has taught me how to detach. And um, like Jim just said, you know, you detach in so many different ways. And one thing is to walk away. Second is to breathe. But yes, you know, one thing I always do is meditate, right? Every time I get that frustration feeling and it, it, with having 17 transactions pending at the moment, I, I am in that state of mind. I do get frustrated when all parts, moving parts are interrupted or I am in the business instead of being on the business, right? So I do get frustrated and, and there are clients that say, well, we don't wanna sell right now because we want to rent right now, even though I've done a little bit more work and then halfway they say something like that. It's frustrating because you put in so much time or you know, in California, they ask for rebates, right? And that is a constant question, but I've learned to acknowledge that uh, expect that and have an answer for it. But I, like Jim said, walk away, go for a walk. One thing I do, my go-to is meditate, just calm the mind down. And that gives me more clarity. That's one thing that has helped me so much. And uh, I've grown from them. So now instead of just running away and sitting on a couch and meditating, doing the whole thing, what I do is I sit on my desk just like this and say, okay, I'm gonna breathe breathe <laughs> and i'm just going to listen to music just shut everything off listen to music ryan similar to you um i do different things um my biggest problem that i find and i think that you know jim kind of talked to this too it's not i can be angry frustrated irritated pissed off any of those things by myself and that's okay because I'm a human, I'm going to have emotions. Because one of the things I'm going to say right now, and we said this on the webinar we did this morning, Jesse, right? We are emotional creatures who are trying to be logical. That's who we are. We are emotional creatures first. Most people say, oh, we're logical creatures. BS. 
go on Facebook and you tell me how much logic there is there. So no, we are emotional creatures. So what do we have to do? So we have techniques, um, you know, uh, Jesse and I've talked about this. There's techniques called anchoring. So you can anchor an idea for you and you can do a physical movement. So for example, this right here is an anchor for me to listen. And, and yeah, Jesse. so, but there's lots of anchors. I can do this. I can do an anchor like this to you know, hold my ear. I could just some sort of thing. It tells my body, okay, we got to switch the state that we're in. We're going to do something differently. So having something set up that you associate with that over and over and over again is an amazing technique because I go, oh yeah, that's right. I have to be the person right now who's going to be the calm person, the reasonable person, the person who's not going to get pissed off. Now, I will say this, and this is kind of a funny thing I tell people I work with, never curse, yell, scream on the phone, but I promise sometimes you don't want to be around me when I hang up the phone because, <laughs> because those emotions still exist. I just have to keep them in check for the next two and a half minutes until I can hit, until I can hit end. Because again, I am an emotional person. I care about my clients. I care about the transaction. We're not remotely saying that you turn into a zombie who just walks around going, yeah, we're saying that you're going to have emotions, but you're the person who's responsible to keep those in check, to help guide your client to, to make the decision that's in their best interest. And that's really the whole key to it for me. And, and part of it starts with awareness of it because that what was what it for me is reminded me when you said anchor, right? As you have these emotions, you want to start to develop that sense of awareness when you feel something. Maybe it's a tension in your body. Maybe it's something physical. Maybe you notice you're breathing shallowly. Maybe you just, you're talking faster. Everyone's got a different something that happens. When you find that happening, you want to pause and say, okay, is the path I'm going down now actually the best course of action? Or am I just thinking that because it's a fight or flight response from the way my body is going? The, the whole thing you, the, the, go ahead, Junkie. Self-talk, right? Self-talk. Oh, definitely some self-talk. That's so on. important. And last two weeks, guys, like I, you know, I told you just my my eye. Um, when I stress, something or the other physically happens to me, <laughs> and it's usually my eyes, and I'll have a killer on top of my eye. And you know, I checked with the doctor and all well. But what I'm trying to say is that stress acts differently, or when you emotionally attach yourself with the transactions. Mm -hmm. things happen because everyone in the end of the day like brian said we're all humans right we all have emotions right and so when that happens something or the other when stress happens i didn't know how to deal with the situation and it attacked my body and when that happens that's a no-no that's where you draw the line and say okay time to chill time to relax time to go meditation was not even helping right um but it was time to detach from the electronics. It was time to detach from the clients. It was time to detach and how we do it emotionally. I didn't know how to. And so uh, it was tough. I have to say that. So we all go through the emotions. So, so I'm going to jump in and Jim, you might have something to piggyback on this. I'm not going to get totally woo woo and, 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 uh, and Eastern here, but for a minute, bear with me. Cause I've had regular Western real estate coaches stand on stage and explain this. And I believe it, the universe, whatever you want to call it, will give you signals. Okay. Yeah. They start small. You don't listen. They get bigger. You don't listen. They get bigger. They get bigger and bigger. So by the time you get a, something that's stress related on your eye, that's coming, you've ignored a series of, mm. and I'm not putting you on blast. I'm just saying everybody does this. You've no, ignored a series no. of warning signs that happened prior to that moment. And we yeah. all do it. Your, your body, even if it's, you're not talking the universe, your body physiologically will, it's, it's that, it's a safety mechanism that's built into our wiring as human beings. It, you, you have ex experienced that too, Jim, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, you know, um, <clears throat> when you, when, when you become sick or you, you have some sort of a disease or um, illness or sickness, so those, that's the physical manifestation of something that's been happening for a long time. You know, people, um, cardiologists will tell you that when you have a heart attack, you had the heart attack that you had today formed 10 years ago. So and it's the buildup of the plaque and it's the buildup of the stress and it's the buildup of the, um, the blocking of the arteries. That doesn't happen overnight. That takes years and years and sometimes decades to happen. So, um, People think that when something happens, it just happened in an instant for something that that was the cause of today. But it's the really the buildup and the cumulative effect of stress of um, 
you know, um, being upset all the time and, and um, emotionally um, drained. Emotionally attached to your business, attached. It's like, it's attached to your hip, you know? Um, yeah. You have to learn to disconnect, especially in our business environment. Yeah. You have How many people, if you asked, if you said to them, it, would you rather have more money or um, be sick in some way? Right. And, and I see, by the way, Mary Ellen, who's here on yeah. the Zoom, she has her hand raised. I don't, I don't know how to, what to do on this style of a webinar for hand raise. If you want to type your question in the chat box, we can, we can read it off if you have something, Mary Ellen. Um, otherwise, I'm not really sure that I don't know the controls. For <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's a first. We, I, think, I don't think we've ever had a hand raised. No, I love it, though. But, but, or maybe, maybe that was like an amen. I don't know. But the, uh, <laughs> just like, but the, uh, when you say detached, and I want to go back to anchoring in a minute. Don't let me forget, Brian, because I want to do a technical, like tactical training on anchoring. Sure. But when you say detach, everybody who's watching this webinar, unless you are driving, keep both hands on the wheel if you're driving. Everybody else, pick up your cell phone and, when you, and wave it around. And when you say, look, I am attached to my business and my hip. This is how it is a <laughs> yeah. physical attachment. And so when you say oh detach, God. this yeah. is something that this is a, a tactical thing that I implemented in my life around the time that I had kids. I have a three-year-old, mm. a six-year-old, but it was a game changer in my real estate career. I have a phone free time every single day. It goes in a drawer, a physical drawer in my house. It's not like the phone drawer. It's like a, my stuff drawer. So I pick any drawer, it doesn't matter. Drawer is not special, but I stick it in a drawer where I cannot see it, hear it, look at it. Because if you know the term uh, conditioned response, mm -hmm. Pavlov rang a bell and the dog drooled. Pavlov rang a bell, dog drooled. If you look at your cell phone, those of you who I just said to hold your cell phone, I almost guarantee you half of you already looked at something on your cell phone because you couldn't help yourself. And if you didn't, you have a burning itch inside that makes you want to look at the message. You're like, I see notifications. I'm supposed to look at these. Okay. It is just, it is hardwired into our physiology now. I won't dive too deep into that. But when you start to condition yourself that you get that break, it helps that, it helps reset. Mm -hmm. I do it for two hours every day and it's amazing. So I do it only for one hour, you guys, and that's dinner time. That's dinner time with the family, right? That's a, a no boundary, no crossing, nothing. I don't care who it is. But that's huge. Yeah. And, and it, it's so important to make sure that, you know, and, and that's something I have raised my kids with. And now they're young adults and they carry on, you know, that, that sort of uh, legacy, so to speak. But that is so important to have that a one hour a day, like you do two hours a day. This phone is detached one hour a day. I it could be 30 more. minutes. I want to do more. <laughs> it, but it could be 30 minutes. It, wherever you're at in your career, like I get it, like you got to start somewhere. But when you get back to the middle of the day, when you have something stressful in a transaction and you want to stay detached in that moment, just it helps to reset at different points of the day. It doesn't have to be in the moment. Does that make sense? Do you guys agree with that? Yes, I do. Does it, does it count if, it's, um, if I detach eight hours every night? <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. No. Maybe. Because your brain is still thinking, you know, maybe. I mean, yeah, I mean. Even at night, are you really shutting off? No. That's a question, not. right? Are you really shutting this off? The brain, right? Because it's constantly on a go. And every yeah. time I have to remind myself, like this morning I had to remind myself when I was meditating, shut your brain, shut your brain, stop thinking, stop thinking, you know, especially when it comes to your client or your business, stop it. But, but you can't stop your brain, Jonky. You can't. You can't stop your brain from thinking you about the I mean, problems, right? I, I, I mean, I, I have, I, I have, there's a, there's a line, there's a line in a guided meditation that I've listened to thousands and thousands of times. So I have it like memorized at this point, but there's a line in this meditation that says, you can't stop your brain. Don't even try to stop it. Just leave it running. Like it's in the other room, like a TV that you hear from the other room and move on. That That's the imagery that I get. It just, it works for me. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. This is my, yeah. 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 I, I think that's something I will start implementing. And, 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 <laughs> and for, for those of you, and again, you know, I'm a, I'm a language nerd. For those of you who want to stop doing something, I want you to listen right now and say, don't think elephant. Okay, it doesn't work. Your brain does not function in <laughs> negatives. You have to give it something to think about. Think about green apples. Okay, now I'm thinking about green apples. I, I like green apples. That's a good thing. Don't think about elephant. You're screwed. We all just thought about this big elephant, and there's, there's just no way to... To do that the brain does not function in negatives for all of those of you who are watching and that's why we were kind of picking on jonky there stop thinking what are we going to do we're going to we're going to all your brain hears is thinking 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 so anyway keep my, that in um, mind as you move forward yeah. <laughs> i like that 
that though when you like you just said you know don't think about the elephant but my mind went straight <laughs> to the elephant you know mine does not understand negative i promise right. the conscious right. mind does but the mm -hmm. unconscious mind does not right and that is so true dang it so <laughs> train your mind just it's okay let it be let it come let it go just you do your thing right absolutely go ahead jimmy you're jumping in brian <laughs> Um, no, I was going to say this. This is for those of you who want to do uh, are, are a beginner or want to learn about getting into meditation. This is a great, very easy thing to do is to label thought, um, because most people think that you know meditation is about not thinking, which is inaccurate. No. Um, uh, meditation is about um, acceptance. So when so so what I do is. Um, and this is this is what I was taught from the very beginning when I first started meditating is to um, every time that you have a thought and you catch yourself thinking, label it thinking. And as soon as you are aware of the thought and label it, it disappears. And then you get to the next thought. And as soon as you label that thought, you label it again, say, I'm thinking, and then it goes away. And you and you can see how as soon as you bring awareness to what's going on internally, it floats away, it disappears. That's awesome, Jim. I, I love it. So what I, I do when I meditate, sorry, Jess, but no, go for it. that real quickly, but when I am meditating, I if, if when a thought comes in, not if, when a thought comes in, <laughs> Brian, <laughs> mm, <I love laughs> when it. the thought comes in, I say, white paper, you know? And then Perfect. that at that moment, it blanks out, right? White paper. So That's it's great. like a white plain paper. And then it reminds me to go back into my breathing mode. Oh. And, and there's one meditation that I do, it's called the Kumbhaka. And, and that is just like, you know, the deep breaths that you take and then you release it out. There's so many times I see, you know, me talking to my client or, you know, I, I, I kind of start going there and then I say white paper and it comes back to white paper and that helps, right? So, so let's, let's go back. I want to talk anchoring and then maybe visualization, which I think are both good tools for remaining detached in the transaction. But this specific technique, Brian taught me sitting at a restaurant in Boulder, Colorado, because I remember, because I asked Brian a question. I said, Brian, sometimes my brain goes fast. Anyone feel that way, right? Anyone watching feel like sometimes <laughs> my brain goes fast and I'm talking to people, could be a client, could be someone, whoever. And I have trouble letting them finish their sentence because I cut them off a lot. I don't know if you remember me asking that, Brian. Okay. I, I think a, I do. <laughs> and as a real estate agent, that's a really terrible skill set to cut someone off. I'm telling you right now, the most powerful like skill set is listening. <laughs> Cutting them off is like, you want to, you want to frustrate your client, cut them off all the time. So Brian said, do you want, do you know this anchoring? I'm like, what do you mean? So I'll let you explain it, Brian. What, what is this? How do you use it? And what does that work? So an anchor, I've just created this anchor for me. And, it, and it's something, there, there's some techniques. So I'm just going to be a very, very simple way to do this. I don't want to get real complex, but you know, it's focusing on a time. So you want to go back to a time in your brain when you were doing the task. So for example, I was, I remember I can go back and this is, I was listening. I was listening and, and, and all the positive things that came with that and all the great things. And I, and I did a really good job. Focus on that and then create your anchor. And I, this is just the easiest one for me. It doesn't mean, again, you can pitch your ear, you can do your nose, you can poke your head. But you know, you don't want to be really, you don't want to walk around going like this, you look like an idiot. But, you know, something. So the reason I like this one is I can take and put it on my lap and no one sees it. So I'm sitting and, and listening. So every time I do this, my brain goes, oh, you're supposed to listen. Oh, you're supposed to listen. And here's full disclosure. I started doing this, not with clients, not with anybody else. I started doing this because I wasn't listening to my wife and I wanted to be a better husband. And, you know, if you're a man at some point in time, someone has probably told you, you don't listen very well. We're, that's not our skill set that we're known for. So literally I can see myself in any situation when I realize, and, and I, I, I've been diagnosed with ADD or ADHD or one of those stupid things. I really don't care. But one of the things I know is that I can do this. So I'm over here, I'm over here. And I'll go, okay, great. Come back. Because, you know, I've literally had conversations with people and go, I don't know what the hell that person just said. And, and not because I didn't want to know, but because squirrel, <laughs> you know, so it happens to us all. So when I do this, my mind goes, okay, we're going to focus on Jesse right now until you stop doing that. So it's just a simple technique. And even if you don't create the anchor correctly, it, it's a good reminder, like, oh yeah, it's supposed to remind. So, but 
you actually can create a physical physiological anchor, which will come back and remind you, oh, this is what I do. Now I'm in listening mode. And, you know, it's amazing. So here's fun statistic. And I keep quoting everybody. 99.94% of information that you're going to intake happens on a subconscious level. You can literally, if you knew how to access it, remember every single thing you've ever heard. Most of us just have no ability to access it. There's those people who have like eidetic memories where they can literally say, on Tuesday, I was watching Mary Lou Henner the other day. On Tuesday at 10 a.m. On, in 1985, she met, um, she met Alec Baldwin and she told him that the other day. Like, I don't know the day, time that I met Jesse. We're good friends, but I don't know when that is. So, but if you have the ability to access this, so it, these are tricks and why not? Trick yourself to be better. I'm good with that. And this is one of the tricks that I use to help myself be better. Okay, can I say something now? <laughs> no, absolutely not, by all means. Brian. Oh, God. I love it, Brian, because the minute you said that, you went like this, I went like this. And I started saying, shut up, shut up, shut up. Not yet time to talk. And every time I say this to myself, you know what, Brian? And every time in webinars, you'll hear my, you'll, when you hear any of my webinars, I'm sorry to cut you off. Oh, I'm so sorry to cut you off. But, you know, and I've learned that when I do this, it's like, shut up. It's not your time to talk, right? Because let the other person finish and then you can say something. With my clients, I don't do that. But with other realtors, I'm so passionate about what I want to say. So I'm like, shut up, shut up. <laughs> are, you, are you sure Great you idea. don't do it with your clients? I don't. I don't. <laughs> because at that time, I'm like, listen. Listen to their problem or listen to their urgency. Listen. And I'll point to my ear out or when, the, when I have my headphones on, I'll be like, uh-huh. Listen, you know, so, like, Jim just, uh, like Brian just said. Yeah. Can I say something real quick? Yeah. I don't know if y'all noticed, but here's, here's something that's very interesting. And, and I'm a, again, I'm a super nerd. So did you notice that Janky was super excited and talking about this when she was talking about this? And the second, literally the second she started talking about her clients, her tone, her, her volume dropped, her whole energy shifted. So that's the state, by the way. And here's the thing that's really cool for all of you watching. Jakey knows how to put herself in that state. I just watched her do it, literally, on the air, live, not on purpose. She did a state change. So here's my point. If you want to be great at real estate, find out what that state is for you. And for, for junk, Janky, it's clearly it's this calm, relaxed, lower energy state. That's where she listens best. Find a way to put yourself in that state every time you go on an appointment. Find yourself, find a way to put yourself in that state every time that you meet a client. Find yourself, find a way to put yourself in that state every time that you make a phone call. It will change your life. I was, I was training that the other day with a group of people and I said, look, before you go on every appointment, pick a song you're going to listen to. Pick a mantra that you're going to say. And eventually your brain will go, oh, I'm listening to... Led Zeppelin, that means that I'm about to go on an appointment. That means I'm about to do this. You know, and, and your brain, that's how we do. We work on patterns. Whether we want to or not, we work on patterns. So take advantage of that pattern so that you can put yourself in the state. And again, we're going to talk a little bit about some stuff about dealing with people who are not in a good state. And so step one for me is I need to be in the right state. And that was kind of where I'm at. Like I have to come calm, cool, collected, gathered together because my client I don't, I can't expect them to act that way. They are in one of the five most emotional things that you ever do. Why would I expect them to show up calm, cool, and cool headed? That's my job. And I think that's kind of where we started this. I love that. That is so amazing, Brian, because you just, you, you, you don't, I mean, we don't see each other as often, even on webinars, we're not together, but you studied me so well that I get excited when I'm with you guys and I have so much to share. But when it comes to my clients, I really take a step back and that's when I listen and I understand and I try to understand as much about real estate, what they're looking for, needs, wants, all that good stuff. Even with my team, I'm usually just like, you know, quiet and I listen to them. Um, but when, when it's about my passion and talking about the industry and talking to top leaders like you guys, I'm like, oh, wait, wait, I have something to say. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I get totally into if, it. You if, know? if you really want to be impressed, Brian will tell you the birth dates of your children. He can tell you all sorts of stuff. Just, uh, <laughs> no, I'm not a crazy stalker guy for the record. No, no, I, I was, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a totally different, different, different webinar. All right. So we got a few minutes left, guys. Really, I don't know. We'll, we'll probably go 15 minutes left on this. Uh, I think go over 15 minutes where what do you think is the most important stuff you guys want to cover i don't know if there's any direction you want to take it i'm going to let you throw it otherwise i've got more questions to ask I, I can i can i can go over one more technique that 
that we have actually talked about this before in the in the listening webinar that we did, but it kind of relates to this because it's it's my it's my go to, it's it's my um, signal, it's my you know, sign. <laughs> it's, um, when I when I see people um, starting to get into that stress situation or I'm feeling myself do the same thing, um, I immediately re remember um, that. All I have to do is is ask questions, and it immediately gets people into a different state of mind. So I go, I start to go into the conversation with the intent of um, repeating the last thing that they said, and asking if I have that correct. So um, those are the two questions that I'm always asking at the end of any time that someone's um, telling me something. Is um, what I'm hearing you say is this? Do I have that right? And um, that, without fail, always shifts people's perspective and, and state of being, and they, and they, they change and, and, um, and calm down and know that they're heard. So following that, Jess, just one yeah. second. Following one that right there, I always even end up with one more thing, and I say, how does that sound to you? Making them feel that they've got the control back in them in their hands, you know? Um, just saying, how does that sound to you? Yeah, I was yeah. just gonna point out that I'm, a, I'm married to a therapist and that's, that's what therapists do. I mean, most people, their biggest fear is not being heard. Yeah. But it's, it, it, to put this in real estate terms, and Jim, you can jump on this, but I think you guys can, everyone watching this can have been in there in a transaction where you're selling a couple hundred to a million dollar home and it comes down to the end of the transaction and they're fighting over $200 of something. You're like, you just spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, but it's this $25 thing that you guys are all bent out of shape over, right? But it's it's not, it's the it's not about the money, not about the item even. It's mm -hmm. a feeling of being taken advantage of or not being heard, or there's some underlying emotion that that's what Jim's technique is fantastic for have, helping people feel heard. I've had deals not closed because of curtains, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's so dumb, but people get really caught up. And at it, in the moment, it doesn't, it feels like the end of the world. Um, and, and obviously it's not about curtains, right? But, but it, but it is, <laughs> but it is, it's so real for them. It's so real. So when you can, when you can take a step back, not know that it's not the curtains that are the issue, know that it's something else and then start talking to that instead. Yeah. It's never the so, curtains. The curtains mean something else. Right. So, so how do you guys do that? Cause Brian made a comment at the beginning. He said, we are emotional creatures that attempt to use logic. <laughs> a lot of realtors will go straight in with logic and it just, it fails miserably. How, how do you address, how do you figure out what's going on? Do you just ask questions? What do you, what do you guys do? I'll start with a simple thing I think everybody should do all the time. And if you do this too much, that's a good thing. Acknowledge and affirm. And it's just a kind of a similar way that Jim was talking about at the end. So, you know, I completely understand how you could feel that way. I completely understand that that makes so much sense. You know, most people, and this happens in objection handling, because that's what we're doing, right? We're basically objection handling emotions, which is more challenging. But, you know, to me, step one of, a, of, a, of every objection handler is acknowledge and affirm. You know, you know Jim, I, I can completely understand how you would feel that way. So with all that in mind, let's have a, a little bit further conversation. So it, most people go, well, let me explain to you why you're, you're dumb and stupid and mm -hmm. ignorant and can't understand what the hell's going on here. Now, we don't use those words, but as again, as somebody who loves communication, 7% of communication is the words that you say. So I can literally call you an idiot and smile and say it in a way that'll make you laugh, or I could say something, call you, tell you you're brilliant and be, you can be insulted because words are just words and, and they're such a small part of what we're talking about. So start with acknowledge and affirm. You know, Jesse was talking about this with the therapist. A therapist basically is going to sit there and listen to you. I've been to therapists. I know this is firsthand knowledge. They're going to listen to you. A good one will acknowledge and understand. And, and then all we're going to do is just do a little bit of a shift. We're going to offer you a different possibility. And that's what this is all about. And I, I refer to that as a reframe. I'm going to take something, and this is definitely one potential way to look at this, but here's another thing I'd like everyone to think about. We think of the world in black and white. 
there's very, 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 very little worth black and white in our world mm -hmm. because we all look through our own filter. Back to my number, 99.94% happens on an unconscious level. That means there's a whole bunch of stuff going on that you're not even aware of. So getting someone to it, just be open-minded never, ever, ever starts with, well, let me tell you why you're wrong. So, and, and I not, I know we don't use those words, but if you go right into an objection handler without acknowledging that you understand what's going on, all they hear is let Brian tell me why I'm wrong. That's all they hear. And, and I can't do the explanation justice. So I will bring my wife onto one of these in a future week, by the way, if you want to have an actual licensed therapist on here, but when you feel yourself getting defensive, there's an underlying reason why you are getting defensive, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. There's an emotional trigger and things, and we won't go into that for the sake of time today, but that's really interesting to look into that for yourself as to what's going on when you do feel yourself getting triggered and getting yeah, and, and when, it's the second that you blame somebody or you make them wrong for something, they stop listening. Yeah. So then the thing that you want to accomplish will never get accomplished because um, the conversation is over at that point. Right. You've just, um, they've just left the building, so to speak, mentally. Right. I mean, uh, like Brian said, uh, you know, acknowledge and, you know, affirm the conversation. But at the same time, in that conversation, let them know pros and cons of the kind of decision they're about to make. They're the judge of it. Right. They have to make that choice. They have to live with that choice, whatever that choice might be. Yeah. And, and I love what you're talking about there, Jenky. I call that pacing. So for example, let's say someone said to me, well, I'm going to terminate on this, on this house because the seller's a jerk and they won't do this and this and this. So, I mean, we've, you guys have had that conversation, right? I know I have multiple times or the other agent that, you know, somebody's, somebody's very emotional. So again, I'm going to acknowledge it for, you know, I completely understand where you're coming from. It does feel like maybe, maybe the seller is being unreasonable. So they're done. I acknowledge and affirmed. Yeah, you're, you're right. Okay. Now, with that in mind, let's just take a look at this for, from, first of all, is there a possibility that the seller's not being a jerk? Is there some information we might not know? And I don't know what that is, but I just want you maybe keep an open mind and let's just kind of go over this to make sure we make the best decision. And I'm going to pace them. What's pacing? It's telling them things that are true for them. So it might be something like, okay, so let's just go over this before we terminate. And if you want to terminate, we'll, we'll do that. I, I'm your agent. I want to work for you, but I want to make sure that I'm doing my job and counseling you makes sense. So couple things. We're still in a seller's market. So we're going to have to go out and go through this whole process again. Um, you told me this is the only house in the neighborhood that you're even interested in and you really want to be in this neighborhood. You've already spent about $1,500 between home inspections and appraisals. And currently there's no other houses on the market that you want. Oh, by the way, you mentioned you want to be in your new house by the end of the month. Does all that stuff sound true? Yes. So with that in mind, let me ask you this. Does it really matter if the seller's a jerk and won't do the $500 fix? And are you going to give up your wants and dreams because the seller is a jerk? Just, I want you to consider that before we go and write the termination. Yeah. And, and I, I, by the way, I hit emotional buttons there. Why? Because we're emotional creatures. Yeah. Are you going to let this seller who you hate ruin your dream over 500 bucks? It's an interesting way to get it. Yeah. So. I like that, Brian. Or, and also another thing I do, which I just did, I think last week with a client that wanted to just cancel the transaction. He was, um, you know, did I make the right decision? I should have got a ready home, which had all the bells and whistles. This is a fixer, blah, blah, blah. So I went ahead and I obviously acknowledged him. However, at the same time, I told him, imagine your, your entire home with your, with what you want in this home, what you want in this kitchen. Now visualize that and tell me, how does that look to you? How happy will your wife be? And at that time, he was like, oh, you're right. See, sometimes it's just giving them that visualization that, and I said, I'll do what you want me to do, no problem. That's my job and my responsibility to my due diligence to own this for you, to, to own, own it up to you. And if that's what makes you happy, so be it. However, just, just let's, let's just visualize this. And that's when he said, thank you, you know, for, for even giving them that visualization. Mm -hmm. Go on Pinterest, start designing your home, how, 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 how it will look and how you, will it make her feel and you feel when you see that finished product. So, and sometimes you just got to just straight up ask people, you know, are you making this decision based on emotion or is, is this in your best interest or is this strictly an emotional decision that you're making? And, and if so, let's talk about it 
uh, because my job is to make sure that you are empowered in the decision that you're making. And right now it feels like you're not. Mm -hmm. Nice. I Are love you? that. That's mm -hmm. a good one. And with, with all of these three options, something I want to throw out before we run out of time, I do want to tell people about the power of visualization, which I know you guys all believe in, but I will visualize, like literally close my eyes and say it out loud in my head, the conversation I'm going to have with a client before I have it. Because I have certain clients that trigger me. I've had them in my career. You guys probably have too. And you know that when you get into that conversation, they're going to say something that's going to happen. You're just like, you start getting rolled up into their world of whatever. If I visualize through how I see this conversation going, it helps me maintain and go back to, okay, breath, say, say the same words Jim just said, which were great. Good. Do yeah. you guys do that? Is that just totally. me? I totally agree with that. I sometimes visualize, most of the time I do visualization, whether it's about to send an offer in and, and visualize the pending, you know, or visualize, you know, the, the listing agreement being signed or even the conversation. See, all these are emotional parts of our business, right? Uh, getting the offer accepted and, and delivering that message to the buyer or getting a listing agreement signed and, uh, you know, letting at the end of the day, when you look at the next sheet, the client is happy with what they netted and surprised. That is an emotion as well, right? So every part of our business is very emotional. And um, with that said, it's it triggers a lot of emotions inside us as well as realtors. And when I have that, when I do that visualization before I go into a step into that meeting or have that, have that conversation, that, that emotional conversation, the first question I ask myself is that, am I doing the right thing, right? Am I about to embark on a good conversation with my client and is it in their best interest? Yeah, I love it. There's, there's a lot of really cool science behind visual, visualizations too, if you look into it. Right. You know, um, we should have a we should have a webinar on that. Sorry, I cut you off, but I'm yeah. doing this too. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm writing it down. It's a good it's a good idea. The science of visualization. We'll do that for another webinar. There we go. Perfect. Science. That is coming up now. <laughs> All right, cool. Really cool study out with uh, basketball players on visualization. Yes, I was just about to mention that. <laughs> See, Brian, I'm quiet. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw a couple other things out there real quick. Have some questions that you ask. And here's the thing. I'm not a big script guy. Those of you know me know, but I do have, and these are scripts. So we can call them anything you want, but you can come up with, you know, you don't have to memorize mine, but you know, here's a great question when someone's acting in an emotional way. So did you, did you decide that on your own or is there some evidence I'm not aware of? What you're doing is you're making them engage in a way that says, oh, well, um, yeah, my brother-in-law three times removed the other day, I was talking to him on Facebook and he said, I shouldn't do this. Okay, fabulous. You know, at least maybe we know where we're at or, you know, is it possible that something else is happening with that seller? Is it possible, you know, all I want to do is get people to snap out. I want to state change out of this. This people suck. I hate this. This is horrible. But you know, all those things. And, and here's a final thought because I know we're near at the end for me anyway. Um, remember the person who's remain, remaining calm. And this is more directed for those people who, when you're dealing with other agents who are extremely emotional, they're in control. When you're yelling and screaming and I'm going, yeah, you know, I understand where you're coming from. I appreciate your, who's in control there. I am because I'm the person who's staying calm and I'm going to win. Why am I going to win? Because that person is way off the rails. And, and how do I know that? Because I've been off the rails and every time I go off the rails, I lose. So, you know, it's just, you know, kind of re reverse evidence. But you anyway. can hang up and be off the rails. That's okay. You can 100%. do 100%. Yeah. But not, do, you want to make them think, okay, why is she okay with it? Number one, and she's not saying anything about it. Number two. So, why is this headed? What is, they are curious to get into your mind and figure yeah. out what is it that you're thinking. Yeah, you know? and then they're not negotiating and they're thinking about you. Mm -hmm. Yep, if I've <laughs> I got you think about that, I'm winning, right? <laughs> I, I think that's a I think that's a perfect way, way to wrap this up. Really, if you guys have any last thoughts you want to chime in, let me know. But if you're watching this on Facebook, drop a comment. Let us know. T right, tag us. Brian, by the way, is a, an amazing coach, and a lot of these like language things he's talked about, he is rolling out a course that will teach you about these things, which is going to be fantastic next month. So make sure you ping him. Uh, anything else you guys want to add before we wrap up? I, I really want to say good. thank you. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, we need to see you here often. Definitely, that. it'll be Thanks. awesome. Um, right. I just want to say visualization for sure, because again, like Jim said, basketball players. I wanted to say that 
um, but yeah, there's a whole talk about that. Let's 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 dig into that. All right, we'll throw it on. We'll throw it on for for two weeks from now. I love it, <laughs> guys. Have a wonderful Friday. Have a good, busy weekend, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye everyone. Thank you.